Hi, a few weeks ago, I did a video on how I was going to incorporate a Pinterest strategy in building my Etsy store to $100,000 per year. Now it is still moving along really slow, but it is that time of the year where things do start to slow down with online sales, especially when you're dealing in the financial space, budgeting and things like that. They just don't seem to be as much of a priority as in the first of the year and the end of the year. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm going to use these next few months to build out my strategy, create more products, and then learn a little bit more about different things that I've been putting on the back burner. So today I'm going to follow up in a little bit more detail on how I'm using Tailwind to post my Pinterest pins. Now, I am not an expert by any means, but this is what I'm doing. And I have started to see um, some increase on my, in my analytics in my Pinterest um, account. So if you're interested in that and you want to follow along with the journey, thank you. <laughs> and please comment below. Keep the encouragement going because sometimes when the sales are slow, we have a tendency, or myself included, to get a little discouraged. The other thing, I was going to do a short on this, but I'm just going to throw it in this video. If you're new to Etsy, you're a beginner and you're just getting started, it's a lot more competition on the platform. So getting your first sale or your first hundred sales, it may be slow coming, but just stay focused. And the other thing I would say is install the Etsy app, because when you hear that little ding on there that you have a sale, it should actually say that you got a sale. <laughs> It keeps you going. It gives you a little um, encouragement. In addition, if you're familiar with the Star Seller Badge, one of the criteria is how fast you respond to people who send you a message or ask you a question within the first 24 hours. So if you have the app on your, on your cell phone, then you're notified. And even if you just respond that, I'll check into that. They don't really follow up on all the responses is how fast you respond to the first question. So maybe you just, you're on vacation or something and you just want to give some type of response that you're going to get back with them. That helps keep your metrics up. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So by the way, it's a little off topic, but I'm not new to Etsy, but when I was having that app in the beginning, especially the first ding, it definitely raises your vibration and gets you excited. So let's get started with the Tailwind demonstration. I'm gonna show you how I use Tailwind right now, but I will be changing some things as I go along because as I use it more, I'll learn more about the platform, but I'm gonna share the knowledge that I have as of right now with you. Let's get started. So I guess I'm a little excited today because I didn't even introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Sherry from SherryLouMiller.com. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've been following this journey or my channel for a while, thank you for your support. And as always, this channel is dedicated to helping you on your entrepreneurial journey to create digital products, to increase the financial flexibility in your budget, to earn more than you spend essentially. Now, let's get started. So first, I want to say that I create my pins inside of Canva. As you know, I use Canva for a lot of different things in my business, whether it's creating my thumbnails for my um, Etsy shop, whether I'm creating images for my blog. I do almost everything in Canva. I've gotten rid of Photoshop because I'm not a Photoshop expert. That's more of a graphics program to me if you're... Um, now, you don't have to be a graphics designer, but it's a little bit more of a learning curve. And I've been using Canva for years and they are really building out this platform. So it pretty much meets my needs for what the needs of my business. So I'm just going to stick with it. This time I switched around to an annual plan where it used to be month to month just to save a little bit. So if you want to try out Canva, there is a link in the description for a free 30 day trial. See, if you like the pro, you can do a lot of things on the free version, but I have the pro version because it just gives you access to a little bit more 
bells and whistles as with any paid plan. So let's get started. So under creative design, there's actually, if you put in Pinterest, you can see there's one for the um, 1000 by 1500, which is what I use, or I see some pins that are 1080 by 1920. It's just up to you. I think the ratio is um, three to two. So if you want, that's just, you know, it's a vertical pin. I use the 1000 by 1500. Now, sometimes for a little inspiration, I will go under design and I'll put Pinterest first and then whatever subject I'm looking for, whether it's budgeting, savings, whatever it is, just to see what type of templates they have available. Today for demonstration, I'm going to use this one. This was not the text on this particular pen. I just wanted the image and I'm going to demonstrate one, a budgeting pen because I offer a budget planner in my store. So I have, um, I haven't changed this text because it's for illustrative purposes. You always want to put your website or something that identifies you on your pen because believe it or not, people will take your pens. I haven't experienced that personally, but I've seen that over the years where people um, have mentioned that, but it is what it is. You can't let that type of stuff slow you down or even pay too much attention to it. Just do what you have to do to protect your business and your images and then keep it moving. So I did change this because I wanted to put my keyword on the pen, which is budget. I'm going to name the pen something that includes my keyword, create a budget. And then I actually added step by step. Now, when I was coming up with the titles for my pen, I did go over to Pinterest and I typed in how to create a budget. You'll get these little tiles down here, which give you different ideas of what you can use to describe your um, pen or what you wanna use in your keywords, things that you wanna include as the title of the pen, when you create your pen, well, the title of the image, I should say. And then when you use that image to, to create the actual pen, you wanna include that in your description and in your title. So figure out what keywords you're gonna use. So all of this is pretty much a part of the pinning strategy, but not so much tailwind, but I just wanted to mention it. So you can use the tiles to maybe create long tail keywords for your pins. So one other thing that I will mention um, that I'm doing differently this time. And I don't remember where I saw this, so this isn't my idea. Somebody mentioned it. I saw it years ago, but as I, um, I wasn't really heavily involved in my Pinterest pinning strategy, so I didn't use it. But this time, since it's a major part of the strategy, I'm trying to be a little bit more organized. So what I've done is inside of my Pinterest folder, I've created different topics that I'm going to pin on. So I'll store my pins in here so that I can keep up with what I'm doing, what pins I've created for what subject matter. Now, these aren't really keyword um, optimized because this is just for my organizational purposes. So today, as you see, this photo was created today. I started doing this last week. So today for the demonstration, here's the pin that we created. I'm going to name the pin, how to create a budget step by step. And those are the keywords, create a budget, budgeting, that I'm going to try to optimize my pen for. So the other thing that I'll mention is I use Allure now to help with writing my blog posts, my pen descriptions. Um, I provide a little bit of information. It's under the AI assistant and then product description is what I use. There's also a link for this in the description if you want to check it out and see if it's something that you can use in your business. If not, you know, chat GPT is all the rave. That's a free um, AI tool that you can use. I've used it for blog posts, but whenever I do use AI tools, I take what they give me and then I massage it a little bit to make it my own. I haven't really used anything verbatim, but that's up to you. Whether you want to try this AI tool, if you want to use chat GPT, or maybe you're a natural writer and that comes to you 
as I've mentioned before, that's not really one of my strengths. So here I might put, you know, how to create a budget step by step process, um, achieve your financial goals. Just a, a brief description of what I want down here. My focus keywords might be budget, budgeting. Um, financial goals, align your spending, align spending with values. And then I'll create generate. So I'll use this and like I said, to write my product description before I go over to Tailwind to start creating my pen. So in this demonstration, I'm gonna kind of just copy and paste this but I would take this entire description, put it in a Word document because your Intel when your descriptions are a maximum of 5,000 characters, including spacing. So I would copy that into a Word document. I'd, I'd modify this to fit my needs and then do a word count to make sure that I'm at 500. If not, Tailwind will give you a warning. So for right now, I kind of like this. Are you new to the budgeted life step-by-step -step guide? Do um, you find yourself struggling to meet? I just want to make sure we have some of the keywords. So we have budgeting. Um, we said financial goals. Make ends meet, manage money. Imagine for Pinterest, manage money would probably be a good thing. Take control of your finances. Maybe you include something like that. Align spending, you might want to have something like spending habits, track your spending. Here we have the create your budget, financial goals again. So for right now, and this might be more, we're just going to use this part right here. So I want to point out a couple of things. So I've changed mine to five pins per day right now. Now that's just to start out. So if you can see, I'm scheduled all the way through Saturday, so I have to start penny more. I have a mixture of new pens, fresh pens, repens, and other people's pens inside of here. You'll see the lock here because I've actually set the time. So even if I was to use the shuffle, these would remain on that date in that time slot. Everything else would be shuffled around. So you can do that if you want to pen at a certain time of the day. Now we're going to go through this just on the scheduling under your schedule. You can see according to Pinterest, these are the optimal times that I should be posting. Now, if you want to add a time slot, you can, I'm going to increase this because I took it down from, I think 15 to five, because right now I just didn't really have enough of my pens to pin. 15 times a day. So I was having to use more of other people's contents, content. And the goal is, is you're trying to build up your audience. So while you may use other relevant content that may be of interest to your audience, ideally you want to pin more of your content than you do of other people, but just do a mix. But I would say put more of yours and a little bit of other people's. So I took it down to five. So under here, it says generate a new smart schedule. So here's where you can say how many times per day you want to post. And it says that your penny frequent, my penny frequency is in line with best practices. So I'm good. So if you, if I, when I go back to 10, 15 times a day, I will come in here and I'll do this. And then I would generate a new penny schedule, which would create more time slots inside of the schedule. Now we're going to go back to the original publisher. So here's where I would upload the pin that I just created for create a budget. Now, Tailwind does allow you to create inside of Tailwind. I have not used that. They also offer a Chrome extension, which you may want to consider using. And we'll come back to that. It just allows you to pin while you're inside of Pinterest and you can schedule if you're going through the Pinterest, your home feed and you see something you want to pin while you're there, you can use that to pin and then schedule it out. 
I'll demonstrate that at the end. Um, I don't really pin like that because I try to pin inside of my communities. So let's just say so we're going to upload you to upload here and then retrieve the file from where it's stored on your computer. So I'm going to use this pin. And now it's going to bring it over from where it was stored and it's going to create it as a draft. So now we're in the draft. Here's where you will see your pin. You've named that. You've actually named the image itself with some keywords. You're going to choose what board you want. Now, this is the point. If you want to schedule this out, as I demonstrated on the spreadsheet, let me bring that over. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I did this on the last video that I will link in the description, but I use the date. I upload a copy of the image, the description I'm using, what URL I'm posting it to, my focus keyword that I want to rank for, and then other keywords that I'm using. What's the most relevant board? You want to post it to the most relevant board first. And then what other boards are you going to post it to? Now what I'm doing is I'm posting the relevant board, what day I posted that, which would be on the date. And then for the additional boards, what additional boards I'm posting to and what day it will be pinned there. What tailwind, I said groups, but what tailwind communities, I'm going to post that pin in also. So I keep this in a spreadsheet. Again, I went over this in a little bit more detail in the last video. So see the description for the link to that video. So now let's just say that, and I'm not going to schedule this pin because it, it won't be optimized the way I want it, but I'm just demonstrating. So for the boards, let's just say I want to use budgeting. That's the most relevant for me, budgeting for beginners. Maybe I want to use personal finance tips that I have. And then um, saving, how to save money. And then we'll stick with those three. The pin title we had decided was how to create a budget. That doesn't need to be capitalized. And then the description, I'm going to go over and get the description that we created in Allure. So after I've created my title, which would be your focus keyword, and you have some keywords in your description, you've labeled your image with keywords, everything's set from that point. And if you're in communities, you want to click on this to add them to the communities that you've joined. So I would select the relevant communities that I'm using. These are warnings. This is saying that I've already added something two years ago. So I'm not going to concern myself with that. It's too long ago. This one is three months. Now, if it was giving me a warning for the last couple of days or something, yes, I would not schedule that in there because I wouldn't want to get flagged as spam. But I would select those, add them to the community. It would come back. It would say that it was added. And then I would go over here. This defaults to my blog. So if I'm linking directly to a blog post, I will go over to my blog and get that URL, URL that's directly to that blog post. Or if I'm linking directly to my Etsy product, then I will put that URL here. If you look at the intervals, the first one is going to post on May 21st, which is a few days away. But that's when I have time in my schedule because I'm scheduled up until the 20th. Then I want them to be seven days apart. Because this is the same pin, the first pin is my fresh pin. It's a new pin to Pinterest. And then the other two, I'm repinning to different relevant boards. So the first one would be on the 21st and the repins on the 28th and the 4th. So I've been using this strategy so that I can just pin everything related to that pin and that description at one time. Now, I'm going to go over a manual pinning strategy that I've been going back and doing because in the beginning, I wasn't using this strategy to pin everything at once. So now I'm into my insights and I'm under publish um, post. So I've sorted by a date range because it defaults to several years ago. So I've done just this year and then I'm sorting by impressions. 
Now, as you can see, I pinned this last week was the ninth, and eight saves is quite a bit for me, and that was quite a few in the first few days. It's got the most impressions. But let, and I've already scheduled that out because I started this strategy last week. But let's say one of my older posts, um, like this one that's a quote, it goes to my blog and it's 18 and it was posted on the um, April 9th, but I hadn't scheduled. That was my original fresh pin, but I didn't schedule any repinning. I could add it to a community from here, which I don't do because I only add to community communities on my fresh pin the first time I'm pinning. But on the reschedule pin, you can schedule it out here. So what boards you're going to do, so you can do multiple boards. Let's just say, and I'm going to make these up because I'm not going to save these. And then I want to do, obviously this is not right. These are some of my private boards. But then it asks, when do you want to post? So right now, my first scheduled date is the 21st, but maybe I want to go out to the 22nd. Now you can see it'll do the first one on the 22nd and the second one on the 29th. So you can still schedule your repins for future dates to multiple boards, but you want to track in the spreadsheet. Okay, the first pin went to whatever budgeting. The next pin is going to go to a we're affiliate marketing and then the next thing all things you know so that's what you can do i'm using that now i've gone back and looked at older pins that i had not repinned and i'm repinning those and putting them on my schedule now before i go over to the chrome extension let's go in the communities so i'm going to go over to the community tab and show you how i found mine now, a couple of these communities that I'm in, I saw in maybe a, probably a two years ago or something, different communities that people were using that they were having high engagement. So to find a community, you can search for whatever, whatever your target audience is interested in and how you're going to leverage these communities to build up your traffic. So we're just going to stick with budgeting for today. So under budgeting, these are the communities that are related to budgeting. Now, what I look for is the activity. You don't want something like this where the activity is really low, so you're not going to get a lot of exposure there, more than likely. I typically go with the ones that say, um, I can't, I'm, I've maxed out on my communities, but they would normally say join now. Every time I've used one that says request to join, I don't know if they're just so busy or they started to communities a long time ago. I don't get a response, not even rejected. There's just no response at all. It does allow you to preview the community so you can see how active it is. Are people sharing um, pins? But you wanna look at the activity, make sure it's related you can review to see, let's just review this one. I'm already a member. And you can see what they allow you to pin, what the rules are. Says they have 759 active members. My results, I've had 104 reshares. The reach is 625,000. So you want to look for active groups that align with your brand. So in this case, this is based on budgeting, money, personal finance. This is my niche. And it's an active group. And as you can see right now, this is how I leverage the communities. Somebody has reshared one of my pins. So I'll go in and I pay it forward. They, they've shared one of my pins. I can click here and then it will show me. Let me use this one. It will show me the potential impressions from this person sharing my pen, like here, 43,000 impressions. This one has the potential of a thousand. And then it's our debt free. So I'll look at her submissions. I'll go through her pens. I'm saying her, but I'll go through this person's pens and see what aligns with my boards that my target audience is interested in. Creating a personal financial calendar might be good. I look to see 
whether or not they filled in a description. It's just not they're posting a pin and keeping it moving. So I'll scroll through. Sometimes I look to see how many shares they've gotten, which here is one, three, the amount of impressions that they have. So I'll scroll through here and see what pin I want to use because they've shared one of mine. So now I want to share one of theirs and it is in line with my brand. So let's say I kind of like this one. I might actually put this one on here and I put it under personal finance tips. That's the board I'm sure going to share it to. You can share it to multiple boards here and schedule it out as we've been doing in the past. And then you click here to add it to the queue. Or if you want to put, you want to schedule the date, you don't want it to go next in the queue, you can do that here. So when I put add to queue, it will go over and it'll automatically put it on my schedule. So now I'm just going to show you like, um, the Chrome extension, I'm using Chrome. You can Google Tailwind app extension for Chrome. And then it's here. It's, it's one of my extensions. So if you hover around, you will see the Tailwind pop up. So if I click on this, it goes to my schedule. It goes to the draft. It says, let me see if I can pull this down. That I've saved this, it shows, and now it wants me to select a board here, and then I can schedule this out from your home feed. Like I said, I don't, you can schedule it now or save it for later. I don't use that feature that much, but it is available if you're inside of Pinterest on your home feed a lot. You might consider downloading the Tailwind. Now, what I'm going to do a different video, maybe even a short later, is how you can use Tailwind to also schedule your images directly from Etsy. So I'll have that posted probably next week. If you want to stay on the journey of Tailwind, that'll probably be the last one until I learn a little bit more about the platform. So that's how I'm using Tailwind inside of my strategy to build my shop to $100,000 per year. But like I said, <clears throat> excuse me, as I'm on the platform more, I'm starting, and I'm still using the original publisher. Like Tailwind has upgraded, but it was the format that I knew. Right now, I got a lot going on inside of my head, learning a lot of think different things. So I just stuck with the original. So if you log in, you may see something that looks different, but eventually I'll transition over to the newer platform. But that's how I'm structuring my scheduling. That's how I'm leveraging Tailwind to help me with my Pinterest strategy. As far as idea pins and all the other pins that Pinterest offers, I was trying to use idea pins in the beginning. I may circle back because last year you couldn't use a URL. So I wanted to circle back and see if maybe because it's been a while, it was more in beta testing back then, if they, they're allowing you to use, to link directly to an, um, another website from the idea pins. But you know, video, that's where everything is heading. And anytime something is new to a platform, they normally put more, they're trying to push it out, get people to use it. So you may get, last year, people were getting much more exposure. So that's a little bit further down my strategy, but if you're using Pinterest too, I would encourage you to at least take a look at idea pins. And once I start to use that, I'll um, update my channel with a video of the a tutorial or how, or how I'm incorporating that strategy into my plan. So I hope you found value in this. We touched on briefly how to go in um, Canva. If you're Using Canva to create your pins, they already have the template there. They're already sized the way Pinterest wants them to optimize because you want a vertical pin. So I use 1,000 by 1,500, but you can use 1,080 by 1,920 if you want. You want to lay, you know, you want to label the image with keywords. You want to make sure your title of the pin has keywords. You want to make sure you put keywords throughout the description. If you're good at writing descriptions, do that. Just make sure you don't keyword stuff. You just put them strategic, strategically inside of the description. If that's not one of your strengths like mine, 
use one of the AI tools, whether it's Allure, um, Chat GPT, whatever helps you along your journey, and then make sure you stay within 500 characters. So the cycle of pinning everything at once, your focus pin and then the repins, that's saving me a lot of time. So that's something that I am going back, even repinning my older pins and using that when I create my initial pin. So that's a summary of the video. Again, I hope you found value. If so, give it a thumbs up. Don't also forget, forget to support the channel by subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you're notified the next time I record a video. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you in the next one.